Whoa, oh boy. Shouldn't be this good. No, it's, it's actually remarkably good. Yeah, but that do. You know, when I was a kid, my mother wouldn't let me have any of these delicious things. And now that I'm a man, I'm going to have them in the manliest way possible with alcohol. <laughs> All right, today I want to try to make cocktails out of uh, breakfast cereal. Truth be told, I've done basically no, no research on this. I bought the ingredients. I put some bottles behind me. I have some tools behind me. I have some thoughts behind me. And I'm going to ask myself, what kind of a cocktail can I make from Fruity Pebbles? It's fruity, I think something in a sour category, or maybe a tiki drink. I think those are your two ways to go. Well, let's make a Fruity Pebbles daiquiri. This is the Yabba Dabba daiquiri. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Yabba Now I'm in love with this cocktail. <laughs> Let's rim a glass in Fruity Pebbles. This is something. We're doing, we're breaking some new grounds here. Um, oh, Jesus, that's kind of a lot of Fruity Pebbles. I do want to say too, what do these taste like? Well, they taste artificial as hell. But if you had to really narrow it down, lime zest, lime oil. I don't think each color has its own flavor. I think in totality, they taste like lime zest. And that's why I'm thinking daiquiri. I'm not sure what you use as like a sticky for these. So I want to start with, uh, you know, your most standard option, lime juice, and see if that works first to make our rim stick. My next thought was milk, probably like this. My next option was frosting. That's how the TikTokers do it. I'm not just going to dunk it in there because just like I do with any cocktail, I only want to rim about half my glass. Oh yeah, that's what we're talking about. Well, that worked. That looks much better. So we're gonna do Fruity Pebbles. They have a specific flavor. They don't actually have acidity. They have zest kind of vibe. Probably can just safely shake those into a cocktail and have plenty of flavor show up. We're basically gonna make rum infused with Fruity Pebbles before progressing. So I'm gonna do four ounces of rum. I'm gonna just add some Fruity Pebbles to it, like probably a lot. Yabba dabba doo! Just shake those up. All right, let's see what we got in here. So that's good for me, that's, that's fine. We will be able to uh, make a cocktail with this. It is a disgusting color. I don't think that's very appealing looking at all. All right, let's do our four ounces of infused rum. Let's give this a taste right away and just see where we're at. It's pretty dry. We definitely need some sugar in there. So we're gonna just walk this up. Remember there's four ounces of rum in there. I am gonna start with just a half an ounce though on the assumption that there is some sweetness just to figure out where we actually wanna be on that. That's getting pretty close. I'm gonna say we wanna do another half an ounce. I'm stopping there. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a half an ounce into my jigger and just a few drops of lime juice to see if I actually wanna add any fruit juice to this. Oh, I think you do. Now let's start with just a quarter of an ounce. So remember, we're getting a lot of lime oil flavor from the cereal. I'm gonna go to a half an ounce. Sometimes, you know, just a little bit of acidity really can be an excellent flavor enhancer without actually drawing attention to itself. I think that's pretty good. I wanna see if I can adjust this color with a small amount of either of these so that it doesn't wind up looking like slightly pink mud. Still doesn't look great with a blue in there. I mean, it just looks kind of cruddy. Yeah, it might go to green pretty well, actually. Let's see how that affects the flavor. Oh no, I'll take that. That adds some very pleasant character to this drink, believe it or not. Butteriness, like a nutty butteriness. Strange things happen sometimes when you start putting flavors together. You get these weird flavor syntheses. I'm gonna actually start with a really small pour, just a quarter ounce. I'm gonna do one more quarter. So the effect is really subtle in there. It's just a, a slight adjustment on the flavor. I'm gonna trust that it won't make it any uglier. It might make it look better. Ooh, no, it's got a kind of a toxic waste look. I like it. Uh, and there you have it, a yabba dabba daiquiri. It's not very sweet. You do get Midori on the finish, but you get pebbles up front. It's got, <laughs> it's got a surprisingly decent evolution because you got a couple different flavors in there. Rudy Pebbles comes in first, that, that lime oil, lime zest flavor. And then that goes through to a kind of a sour space where it really kind of presents almost like a traditional daiquiri, but with a little extra character, a little, little extra direction in it. It's got some nutty qualities, honestly, still tangy, still in that sweet space. And that resolves into a kind of a modified Midori melon vibe. And it's 
not at all unpleasant. It does have a kind of a grime floating across its surface, and if there was a way to fix that, boy, you'd be on to something. Let's try it with my rim. Sure, it's fun. It's fun to chew up some cereal while you drink this drink. You know, though, the thing of it is, is this is a drink that you could put on a menu at the right place and you would sell. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, you would sell this drink. Ranger Greg here, and I am once more partnered with Yellowstone Bourbon to take you on a mixological tour of the national parks. So let's get going. Everglades National Park was established in 1947. Landscape architect Ernest Coe first began lobbying for its creation in 1928. He wanted to preserve the Everglades from land speculators who had been draining the wetlands since the 1800s. It's a darn good thing he did too, because now the Everglades is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and amongst other things, is the home to numerous endangered species like the Florida Panther, the American Crocodile, and it's also the only place where crocodiles and alligators will live side by side. It contains the largest mangrove ecosystem in the Western Hemisphere, and it provides a third of Florida's fresh water. Now, old Ranger Greg likes to visit South Florida from time to time, particularly Key West, and there's a drink I closely associate with the area called the Rum Runner. Not much of a fan myself, but I thought we could do an upgraded version of it that would be fantastic and a good fit to toast the third largest national park in the lower 48. I call this a bourbon jogger. You see what I did there? You see what I did there? But you're going to need a blender. Now, so because of the way blenders make drinks, I'm going to have to make this a double. Uh, otherwise, there won't be enough volume down here for the blender to kind of chop on. So we're going to start with a half a banana, or in my case, a whole banana. Get yourself some fresh orange juice. Uh, add yourself an ounce per drink. This drink also calls for a half an ounce of simple syrup. We do a half an ounce of lime juice. Now it calls for two ounces of Yellowstone bourbon. I'm going to crack ice into here. Pour that away. And that is a drink I like to call a bourbon jogger. Wink, wink. I like this so much better than a rum runner. The Yellowstone bourbon really cuts through. It's toasty, it gets nutty, sometimes it's a little bit more sweet, sometimes it's a little bit more citrus. Bourbon char in there that, mat that comes out against the banana notes. It's a fun drink, I really enjoy it. And also it's extremely drinkable, which is in the spirit of a rum runner. Anyway, this year Yellowstone Bourbon has donated $250,000 to the National Parks Conservation Association, making them NPCA's largest annual corporate donor. So by choosing to drink Yellowstone, you're choosing to preserve and protect our national parks. To find a bottle near you, visit limestonebranch.com or visit curiata.com for free online shipping. Now back to how to drink. All right, I'm gonna taste test these um, sweet nectar of the gods cinnamon toast crunch. Oh, so good. It's like eating churros for breakfast. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we're gonna make some kind of an old fashioned with these. Do I have a torch, a blow torch? Yeah. Ooh. Like what happens when you toast cinnamon? Toast Crunch. Well, first off, they continue to burn, which is not a great sign, but... All right, well, we're gonna set those aside. I'll taste them when they cool off. It's gonna be a bourbon drink. It's gonna be kind of an old-fashioned. This particular glass has like a little reservoir at the bottom. I'm just gonna like fill it with Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And then I'm gonna do a quarter ounce pour of maple syrup, a little closer to a half an ounce. Then I'm gonna do a two ounce pour of bourbon. An ice cube goes in, okay? And then we'll stir that up. This is a, a weird idea. I don't know if I'm gonna like this or not, but you know, I wanna try it. We're gonna need an orange peel. Oh, I didn't put any bitters in that, did I? Well, let's just see how it is right now. Not really a lot of cinnamon representation. We're gonna need to obviously do a different approach here. Oh, these are probably cooled off. Let's see how these toasted ones ended up tasting. Oh, interesting. Okay, wait, we're gonna toast some more of those. They just have a, um, a darker, more caramelized flavor, which is you know, what you would expect, but they also have a, a greater density. Like they're just a little bit crunchier. Thing is, the whiskey is really powerful here. It is overpowering this drink. So this is a bottle of Laird's apple brandy that they sent me in the mail as a gift. Thank you to Laird's. It is a rare spirit. This is the single cask selection. Bottle 131 of 222, 64 months of aging, bottled on 3222 and 121 proof. But this is the apple jack that I happen to have today. So this is what we're gonna use. <laughs> That's awesome. It's perfect. Let's uh, give it a snort. Definitely read apples on that, which is nice. I think in this particular case, we are gonna do some cereal milk. We're gonna let that cereal milk sit 
for a few minutes while we do the rest of this drink. We're gonna throw an ice cube in there first. I'm sticking with my maple syrup. I'm gonna do half an ounce. I do think this one's gonna get a little bitters. Why not? We're gonna do an ounce and a half of this heavy proofed stuff. Then I'm gonna stir that up. Now our ratio right now of maple to brandy is stark. It's pretty in the favor of the, the maple syrup. All right, let's see how that is. Whoo, baby. That's not too shabby already. I had a thought about throwing a little coffee in there because it's a breakfast thing. But we're not gonna use like Kahlua because we got plenty of sweetness in here. We're gonna use just some cold brew, some cold brew concentrate. We're gonna start light. We're gonna go with a quarter ounce. Interesting things are happening. We're gonna do another quarter ounce. So we're up to a half an ounce of cold brew concentrate. It's acting almost like bitters. Dude, I think you should throw cold brew concentrate into a dasher bottle and use it as a flavor accenter. I'm pretty into what we got going on already here. Let's see how our cereal milk is progressing. Oh no, that's good. What I wanna do now, sacrilegious this may be, I'm gonna do a float now and do an orange twist. I'm sure I've done a drink called Breakfast of Champions before, so I'm gonna have to call this one Breakfast of the Gods. Let's see how that is. Every flavor exists in harmony. <laughs> I don't know how that's possible. It's an ugly drink. Eh, it's not that bad. Looks like oh, a white yeah. Russian. Coffee, cinnamon milk, apple brandy with a, a low thrum of maple sweetness throughout it. What I would do if I was gonna serve this at like a an upscale bar, this is like the kind of thing, I, I've been to a place in London called the Experimental Cocktail Club. I would do like this, something like that on the side. And then maybe like one of those little jam spoons or something, you know, so that you could have these as a snack. And putting them both in your mouth is awesome. This is fucking cool. Oh man, and the caramelized toasty burned Cinnamon cereal, really neat. Oh my God, it's crazy. <laughs> Success. I know there's a few bartenders who follow my show who work in cool places. Try this out. See if it's something you want to put on your menu. Let's try some corn pops and see uh, what we can do with the corn pops. I don't know about you, Meredith, but all I've eaten before this episode today was some cantaloupe. So this sugar is hitting kind of a dry well. Woo. Oh, it could be the alcohol too. Yeah, the alcohol might do it. The alcohol, yeah. I've always loved corn pops, like, a lot. I don't know if they taste like corn. I guess they do. I might call corn pops nutty. I'm just, like, eating all of these uncontrollably. What if we did a tiki drink with these? Why not? Allspice Dram. Here we go. Uh, just so I've got it in my mind. Oh, God, I love the way that tastes. All right, here we go. We're going to try Velvet Falernum. It's funny, velvet is a really good descriptor for that. It's velvety. While that little finger full of corn pops was in my mouth, I got another whiff of the allspice dram and like the combo was pretty fucking unreal how good it was. So I think that might be the center of this universe we're about to build. So I'm just gonna add some corn pops to my shaker. Next, let's do two ounces of our five year. What the fuck, let's just start building and see where we wind up, right? I think we want to do a quarter ounce of Elizabeth Allspice Dram, but I think we want more than that, actually. And then I'm going to stir this all up. Really try to kind of crunch my cereal, see if I can get some of the flavor off of that, because I don't think it's going to really express until we shake. Oh, man. I like where this is going. I want to elaborate now, because we've gone to Tiki. Coconut Cartel. This is like the good stuff. Let's do one ounce. Let's do an ounce. Curiata sent us this, and if you like the spirits I'm using on the show and you want to pick up some and have them sent straight to your door, you should use the link in the pin comp below or up here in the corner because Curiata does that. They will send it to you. Okay, here we go with um, a little coconut. We're going places, baby. We're gonna add a touch of sweetness. We're gonna start with a quarter ounce. Yep, just a quarter. Almost certainly gonna add a quarter ounce of lime juice. It's just like a flavor enhancer, that little bit of acid, you know? There we go, quarter ounce of lime. I'm in the coconut, mix them both exactly. up. Exactly. Harry Nilsson. I said, doctor. Is there nothing I could take? I said, doctor. To help me with this belly ache. <laughs> yep, another quarter ounce of St. Elizabeth Allspice Dram. So we're starting to lose that. Very interesting. Now I'm gonna add some ice to this and shake it up. I said, doctor. <laughs> Is there something I can take to help me with this belly ache? Is that song about having a, some kind of a drug addiction that I'm not under, I'm, I don't understand like what it's really about? Call me in the morning. Yeah, I think, yes, I think he's telling them. Or it's hair, it's take some hair of the dog at the very least. Corn oh. poppy goodness. There we go, some nice crushed ice. 
Not a bad color either. Looks like tiki. I'm gonna garnish that with some fresh mint. I'm gonna stick a straw in there. And then, because I haven't tested it yet, but this may be totally unnecessary, I'm gonna cover the top of the drink and cereal. Because we're doing tiki stuff, I'm gonna toast it a little bit. All right, let's see how, I don't even have a name for this. We're gonna have to name it. Wow, first off, hot corn pops, really good, extremely good. This drink came out a lot fruitier than I was expecting, hold on. I was, we haven't had a flop yet, Mayor. The corn pops made up with the allspice dram to bring up some vanilla. Definitely got a coconut note on the, uh, the end of the flavor profile. And then the actual last thing that lingers, it's almost like a mouthfeel, is the corn pops. It's like, it's, it's holding on right now. That's fun. Mint, you don't need mint. Mint's just there for decor, just to give it a look. Honestly, maybe the mint might even clash a little with what we got going on here. This drink is called Pop Culture. I think this is pretty cool. I am into this. Man, we're three down. Three for three. They're great. Uh, one thing I'm kind of compelled to point out is that this glass was provided by Visky. Uh, Visky actually provides all the glassware appearing in this episode. Um, Visky reached out, they said we'd like to be a sponsor of the show, and of course, as I am, I was very suspicious. I said, well, let me look at the glassware. Oh, the glassware was very nice. So now they provide the glassware to the show, and they're a sponsor. So if you like what you see and you want to pick up a Visky glass, you're going to use a link in the pin comp below or up here in the corner and use code HOWTODRINK15 at checkout. You're going to get 15% off of your order. And uh, a hearty thank you to Visky for helping me make this show. We're moving on to Captain Crunch. I gotta tell you, I don't know that I've ever really had Captain Crunch. I would describe this flavor as being just malt, just like flat malt. So I just went and I got a couple of Amaros. We're gonna do something a little weird. I take a big fistful of these Captain Crunches. I'm gonna chew them up. I'm gonna get that taste in my mouth. The Montenegro. I'm interested in what happens when you put Captain Crunch and Amaro Montenegro together. And there's a phrase I never imagined coming out of anybody's mouth. For some reason, when you combine Captain Crunch and Amaro Montenegro, you get the very specific like air conditioner mold smell that you find in Epcot Center. <laughs> a lot of nostalgia in that. Well, I think we're gonna revisit our old friend, the rim job. Gonna get crunk. Okay, I got my crunch rimmed glass. We need a base spirit. Cognac, that's the winner today. I'm gonna, let all I'm gonna let it all hang out today. One and a half ounces of cognac, and let's do three quarters of an ounce of a Montenegro. I think I could do with a bar spoon of maraschino. That was the right choice. Ooh, we're having fun already, man. That's really cool. Yeah, I think a bar spoon of curacao would be great here. I was actually asking, and you're crazy. You're just trying to add everything, but no, I don't. I think that's the right choice. We're going for like a subtle drink here. I'm going for like a classic cocktail. Hell yeah, man, that's a great package of flavors. One dash, one dash of Angostura will be great here. I'm gonna shake it with some Captain Crunch. Let's get some ice in here. Let's strain our Captain Crunk. All right, here we are, Captain Crunk. Let's see how it is. Remarkably good. Yeah, cool. Very, <laughs> this is stupid. I can't believe, it adds evolution. So here's the thing. This is a spirit forward, well-balanced classic cocktail that incorporates very clear raisin oak cognac notes with the Amaro, which has its own unique flavor. Like you get that, uh, the Maraschino brings in just a touch of like sweetness, right? All of those things are present and working and it rides those flavors out and then it resolves into multi crunch, Captain Crunchiness. It's a drink with evolution and balance and unique qualities. Like by every objective measure, except for the fact that it's a little bit ugly, this is a good cocktail. I can't promise you're gonna like it subjectively, but objectively, it's a good drink. I don't know why it's a good drink. I don't think it should be a good drink, but it is. Life's full of little mysteries like that, guys. So the last one to do is Cocoa Puffs. And I had a thought, I don't think I wanna overcomplicate this one. Chocolate goes with coffee, all right? So, oops, that was a little drunk of me. Fuck, ah! Oh man, this is gonna be like ant fuel. Good thing this place is full of spiders to eat the ants. And then I've got rats to eat the spiders, and I got snakes to eat the rats, and I got mongooses to eat the snakes and foxes to eat the mongooses. Anyway, let's see how these guys are, these Cocoa Puffs. 
Yeah, they're chocolatey and they're crunchy. So here's what I'm thinking. What's this guy's name? He's not Toucan Sam. What's this guy's name? Sunny the Coco, the Cuckoo Bird. Okay, this is just off the top of my head, right? I'm gonna get an ice cube. I'm gonna grab this Glasgow Blend Scotch, which is a little bit like an Isla. And I'm gonna do one ounce of that. All right, we're gonna do one ounce of vodka, actually. So we're just getting some of that Isla peaty smokiness. And now I wanna add an equal measure of Kahlua. So two ounces of Kahlua. Yeah, that's close enough. Okay, we're getting nice and cold. Okay, and I'm gonna do a float of milk, like you would on a white Russian. Did it not float, just went right in? That's fine too. And um, a scattering of Cocoa Puffs. You know, I'm not overthinking this one. Just like cover it up, there you go. Honestly, that is attractive. That like looks intentional and kind of cool. I'm into that. I'm gonna call this one a Scotch Sunny. We nailed it, looks cool. I mean like legitimately looks cool. Like I could see that in some weird avant-garde fucking brunch place like we were talking about before. The balance of scotch, just right. Cutting it in half with the vodka was a smart move on my part. Because if it had been over that, it would have been really a lot. But when we cut that in half, we don't lose any proof because we keep the vodka in there. And then you pair it up with the crunchy cocoa puffs. And they actually, the sm like, a, like that much smoke with chocolate cocoa, they go together really, really well. Chocolate works well with coffee. So you get plenty of sweetness from the coffee. Everybody here, it's like, they all connect, right? So you've got your scotch goes to your chocolate and your chocolate goes to your coffee and they become like this chain of flavors. Um, the milk, it just kind of thins it out and, and gives it a, a milk milkiness. It's fun because the cereal sits right on top. You know what guys, I can't think of one other time I've had a bowl of cereal on top of a cocktail. I can't think of one. It might have happened, but I can't think of it. And to me, that's pretty neat. It's fun to do things that are new. That's all I'm gonna say about that. The aftertaste on this is like really fun and experiential because the smoky peaty scotch flavor, first off, when you put that with sweetness, it actually becomes very pleasant in my mind. It slowly fades while the coffee comes up and the chocolate comes up against it. And you get this like lingering aftertaste. I like it, it's very pleasant. The other neat thing about this drink and anything that you just float cereal in is you know it's gonna change over time, which is cool, right? It's getting chocolatier, which is great. This might be my favorite drink of the show. It's coincidence that it worked out to be the last one in the episode, but yeah, I I'm pretty thrilled with this. What do you think? How did we do? I think there's a lot more to explore in the world of cereal cocktails. We think there might be more to do with cereal cocktails. Maybe some basic four, maybe some honey oat crunch, crunch oats, uh -huh. honey crunch, honey Golden crunch. grams. Honey grams, smacks, cookie crisp. Um, I hate Cheerios. Always hated Cheerios. Mm. So what I'm about honey nut Cheerios? Cheerios? That would be don't an like interesting them. flavor. No, I don't oh, like okay. Cheerios. I fucking hate the those little those little fucking bastards, a little spiteful oath. Anyway, this is how to drink the show about making cocktails and how to drink them. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And if you enjoyed this episode and you made it this far, I'm pretty sure you're going to be willing to subscribe and like. You will find me on TikTok, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and Patreon. And if you want to support the show and see some extra stuff from the show, it's on Patreon. I'll be back very soon with another episode of How to Drink. And in the meantime, because I've been making this show for a very long time, here are four more things that you might enjoy. We also have a podcast called Midnight Local, mostly about movies. Mostly. Ooh.